All right. So the name is Thwack. And um, if you can see that T-H-W-A-C-K, that's one of my favorite um, words to describe a sound. And that comes from, I don't know, comic books, specifically um, older Marvel and DC comic books that I used to be able to read when I was a kid. And then if you've ever seen the original Batman series, there were always these cutaways to um, big, big starbursts or, or explosion sort of things that say kapow or blammo and, and that kind of thing to kind of, um, I don't know, I th think it, in Batman's case, it was, you know, nice and campy. Um, but in in certain spaces or certain situations, it, you know, clearly acts as a way to describe sound. And um, this has always kind of influenced me as I was the kid in the back of the room making all of the weird noises. And um, I'm sure that has everything to do with my, at the time, undiagnosed ADHD, but then also going to public school before the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed and all that accountability and all of that stuff took place. So they threw the blind kid in the back of the room and I became disruptive. Um, in the next slide, th these are some of my favorite terms and I can't read them in order, but I will name some of them. There's thwack, there's zzt, which is that Z, 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 T, which is often used for um, like an electronic sound or a buzz. And thwack is sort of, I often think of it as a gesture of either somebody chopping somebody with their hand or using a sword or a, a baton or something like that. There's bleep blorp, which is usually used as um, something to do with computers or robots. Um, there's douche, D-O-O-S-H, which I often think of as some kind of metallic thud or um, a punch or something like that. Kapow, K-A-P-O-W, which is could probably use, use for explosions and punches and that sort of thing. And some of these other words here that are just, you know, onomata, uh, pia, you know, representations of whatever the hell is going on in the comic panel. And so here is some comic panels. And um, I don't know in what order these are, and I'm not sure um, if they're if they're blurry or not to you, but they are from the comic book FX. So it's comic book, the letter F, and then X.com, which has a huge database of these panels with these um, descriptive little fun words here. And so you can see in one of them that it's thwack, 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 where I think that it's the human torch, maybe, that is... Um, cutting through some kind of chandelier, and then there's a kapow, and then there's something with a robot. LJT has left the meeting. Um, there's there's something with a robot um, that does some kind of whirly sound, or like W-H-H-H-R-L, I'm not entirely sure. I'll let you, you guys make up your own decisions here. Um, but they're fun, and I really like them, and um, you know, it, it really cements um, to me, my personality as a nerd. Um, we're going to go here. Um, access is love and love is complicated. And I'm not really entirely sure who came up with that, but it was a show that I was um, part of at Critical Distance in 2018 that Emily Cook and I believe um, Sean Lee curated. Is that right, Emily? I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, yes, yes, uh, Emily Cook and Sean Lee. <laughs> right. And so um, I love this term. And um, to me, it, it's it's kind of um, embraces a lot of the access fatigue we may have, um, the breakdown in communication, often, especially if, uh, say, in my own experience, a blind person communicating with a deaf person. Um, uh, that's always been fun, and there's been a lot of um, a lot of laughing and a lot of um, just laughing at the miscommunication of everything, right? And so, with that, is I keep this in mind when I'm trying to write something that I'm hoping to communicate um, with somebody who may not 
uh, uh, hear it or choose not to hear it. You know, I do a lot of sound work that is sci-fi based and also um, includes a lot of um, recordings of my cane in acoustic spaces and kind of using the blind body as a, as a creative tool. And some of those sounds can be abrasive and sometimes they can come out of out of nowhere. And uh, because of this, I totally understand if somebody doesn't want to be in the room to listen or put on the headphones. And so um, as we move forward, I want to just give you the option to mute or lower the volume when I play something um, in case something is, you know, going to um, pop up and be a pain in the ass for you. I don't want to overwhelm you and I don't want you to um, feel uncomfortable. Um, but it's certainly something that I think needs to be said when you are, um, I guess, presenting um, live sound, right? Or in installation or, you know, recording or anything like that where you don't necessarily give everybody the opportunity. I will keep an eye on both. <laughs> Access is love and so love much. is complicated, everybody. Um, um, I just want you to know that there, there's a lot like image description and audio description for art. Um, there's no real standards, right? I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the cut and dry objective way of describing things. I like a more personal and intimate sort of thing and subjective and getting opinions and adaptations and, you know, uh, getting sidetracked and having it conversational. And so that's the way that I would like to um, keep at it with this presentation. Um, when you're thinking about describing sound, like I said, there's really no standards outside of, of closed captioning or open captioning. And even then, there's folks that really think there should, you know, the, the standards are ridiculous and people that um, do a really great job of just fucking with that system. And um, that's people like Allison O'Daniel, Liza Sylvester, uh, Christine Sun Kim, Joseph. Could you, uh, could you slow down I, for those guys? Sure. Or, sure. Yeah. So, um, I will name, I will spell the names. Um, well, there's Allison O'Daniel, which I guess is A-L-I-S-O-N, O apostrophe D-A-N-I-E-L, um, um, Liza Sylvester, L-I-Z-A-S-Y-S-T-R-E, uh, Joseph Grigley, J-O-S-E-P-H, G R I G L E Y and Christine Sun Kim C H R I S T I N S U N hyphen K I M. And those are people that do a lot of um, art based around um, captions and they are all uh, identified as either, either deaf or hard of hearing. And um, I'm not going to show any of their any of their work today, but I wanted that resource and in, in those names out there for you to um, get into them because they, they, they are all proponents of uh, open captioning in, in film and other things like that. Um, so creative ways of describing stuff. Um, I like to take what I've learned and experienced from people describing image to me. So when I do this, I kind of like to um, rip off the alt text as poetry um, sort of idea and put that towards sound. So that's kind of more of a, a poetic way of, of describing. And, and that's kind of the concept between uh, the concept of alt text as poetry is to, you know, uh, take a poetic sort of um, approach to describing image. And um, I like to do that with sound and I don't necessarily like to do it um, synchronized with um, the sound itself. It's kind of like a synchronous sort of more of a, um, a written piece that could exist on its own and doesn't necessarily need to be a companion. Um, this slide is, um, okay. These are some of the approaches that you can take um, that I like to take. Um, let's see if I can read them. There's, you know, subjective, poetic, on amount of poetic, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, an adaptation, um, cut and dry, uh, 
um, subjective AF, which to me is sort of like more of a, um, a, a, a sort of like a community based or a, a, a more friendly and intimate sort of thing. Like if someone is describing something to you where they have a personal relationship with you and would say, hey, remember that dinner I made last week where um, we drank orange juice after brushing our teeth? That was disgusting, and that's what the sound reminds me of. So that sort of thing um, I always think is, is kind of fun. Uh, this next slide. Um, these are sort of, um, let me see. I'm sorry that I can't necessarily read it all. Um, if somebody wouldn't mind reading this list. Um, Kirstie speaking. I can certainly read this list for you, Andy. Would you like me to go ahead? Yes, it would be lovely. Sure. So the list reads texture, smell, impact, movement of sound, um, audio position, pitch and speed, taste, personal reference, emotion, gesture, time, and cinematic. End of thought. Thank you. And so those are, are ways that I often think of when I'm when I'm writing this stuff. Um, I don't necessarily describe in musical terms, um, but you do talk about time and maybe the speed of a sound or where it may move between the speakers um, or where it is in a natural space. Um, I like to describe um, the texture um, or a smell or any of anything else that's sort of sensory based, um, especially in my work if I, you know, in my work where I had composed it, I often take into consideration the space in which I did it or where my mindset kind of was. And I, I don't necessarily speak in visual terms, but I will use cinematic terminology um, because I think that that's often uh, kind of an easy reference point, that sort of thing. And um, I'm going to play something now. Um, this is a piece called At Arm's Length from 2021. It, um, is, it was part of the Infinite Distance um, show at Transmedial um, Festival, I think, in 2022. Um, I recorded this, these, these, these sounds um, for a series that I called Waiting Rooms. It was all recorded at the Toronto Media Arts Centre. Um, if you remember that spot, um, it was in the middle of being developed and, um, you know, turned into, you know, what I would assume would be this wonderful sort of arts space. Um, and I did some recording around that building and then it had um, unfortunately been closed down by the city after all of this um, bullshit that um, happened between the developer and the city and the people trying to... Um, open up the space. And I apologize for my alarm keep going off. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Um, so um, it might get loud. Um, it's also very quiet at times. And I think that it's pretty goth. And uh, I'm going to go to the next slide, which will show on screen the text, um, the description that I wrote. So you can look at it while we listen. Um, and it will also be um, the description will also be read at the front of um, the piece, and that will be read by Solon Kelleher, who is somebody I, I collaborate with, and that's S-O-L-O-N, and the last name K-E-L-L-E-R-H-E-R. -E -E um, so here's a slide. At arm's length. Leaving the common area behind and shutting the door on the din, I bumble along the stairs and wall, stopping to whistle and gain the size of the empty cinema. It sounds wide and dark and desolate, begun without a finish. I think I found some sandpaper. Between the ears, a pin drops, dust rises and my hands explore a filthy wall. This must be where the projectionist would stand if the room wasn't idle. From the beyond creeps a hollow growl. 
metallic. It drags over to me. I inspect its underbelly and its tail. Like crankshafts and tinker toys, I calm it. I grunt while moving its thorax. In its sleep, this thing dreams of cicadas and the snapping claws of angry crabs. This infestation is 1,000 strong. I'd cover my ears, not for the sound, but for the fear of eggs being laid in my skull. So, Emily, the word earlier was phonology of the blind body, and that's basically like the language. Um, I, th I think of the language of the movement of at least me in spaces. Um, those are all kind of, um, that's like one of the big words that I know, by the way. Um, that was basically me interacting with a space, as you may have, may have heard, with my hands and my mouth and my feet and my cane. Um, and little echolocation clickers and that sort of thing. Um, so that's an example of how I have done this sort of thing, right? And this is all my own, uh, you know, this is my own practice. Um, and, you know, thinking about how other people could um, use this for their own, their own work, there's a million ways to do it, like I had said. Actually, I guess I mentioned a dozen, but still, there's more than that, I'm sure. Um, but if you're an access worker or a curator or whatever you may be, um, you know, there's there's ways to consider this for other people's work and um, describing um, things that may be in your gallery or describing something for a friend and that sort of thing. And so, well, so, uh, um, yes, sorry, I just said that, but forgot to unmic myself oh. on mute. <laughs> So, so in, in 2018, the first time I started um, trying to write these descriptions was um, 
uh, in this piece, um, this piece of science fiction, um, crypto acoustic auditory non hallucination, and the term is up there on the screen. It's this weird science um, theory that blind people can hear trans dimensionally. And it was thought of at Duke University by Dr. Janet Herman in the late 60s. And Dr. Herman made these recordings of blind people um, describing or her reading the descriptions of what these blind people heard that were not apparent to sighted people. Um, they were hearing these events and these things and these beings and then essentially either embracing them or complaining about them. And so I'm going to play really quick an excerpt of one of the uh, recordings that the doctor had made. She um, created a special microphone that um, was meant to record transdimensionally and turns out that it worked. And so um, on screen is the description of what the doctor will read and you'll hear her voice and then a recording of the event. Wendy F. There are two voices speaking an unknown language. I believe they are women. They are playing their music too loud and I don't like it. Sounds like an electric abacus. <laughs> Charles S. A dance recital. A wooden stage. I think that this person is dancing on her hands. Um, so you can get an idea of what that is. Um, I wrote a very big uh, detailed dossier on my research on crypto acoustic auditory non hallucination, and it was published in McSweeney's M C S W E E N E Y uh, quarterly concern um, issue 61 at the end of 2021. And if you are familiar with that publication, everything is fictional. So I made this whole thing up in order for me to sort of start um, experimenting with with sound descriptions. And I, I, I gave a lecture in 2018 um, at the Chicagoland Disability Studies and Culture Conference at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Um, and it took maybe an hour and a half in of talking in Q&A for people to realize that I was totally bullshitting them as I finally broke character. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's just basically been the the uh, the starting point of my um, interest in doing this kind of stuff. So now it's time for a break. So I think we're going to take five minutes. If people need more, that's absolutely cool. Five minutes is not a lot of time. Um, but then when we get back, we'll be doing the group listening. Uh, we'll listen to three pieces and then take a break to kind of, um, you know, finish writing or thinking and digesting all of that.